Welcome to the Published Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. And today we're here with another of our of our series on the final four things in movies. Yes. This time we're going with the middle of what is now a trilogy. <laughs> yes, we're going to we're going to have Bill and Ted take us to hell. Now, it is interesting because Bill and Ted's bogus journey is a trip through the entire afterlife. Mm -hmm. Not just hell. Yes. And, but I'm going to say, I think hell is the part that they got the most right. Yeah, I would say so as well. I mean. What, you're suggesting that we don't get into heaven by how well we can poetically say uh, 80s power battle lyrics? Yes. Yeah, no. That, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that you cannot mug people, steal their clothes, <laughs> and then bluff your way into heaven. Correct. Yeah. Yes. I also, mean, also the scene where death they death in an apron is really convincing of not being death. <laughs> yeah, yes. Don't I know you? No. <laughs> also, the scene with the with the two disembodied spirits then go and possess two uh, live and conscious bodies. I, that's an episode deserving. That's a t this topic worthy of its own episode. Yeah. So what? We might, we'll come back to that someday. What maybe possessions that can and cannot happen. What possession? No, no. That's yeah. a different thing. Yeah. yeah. So. Bill and Ted are on, a, on an amazing quest. Yes. It, it's sort of a... Most of the movie is is essentially a hero's journey, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, they are confronted with a problem that uh, they need... Uh, uh, an enemy that they need to defeat. Themselves. Themselves. Uh, they do not have the abilities to do so. Or, initially, the motivation to do so. Correct. So they need to go and find within themselves the, thi with the things they need. And, as well... The people along the way who will help them, support them and such, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and defeat the enemy. And during the course of this, uh, they die. Spoiler alert. I know, I know, we're not worried about spoiling anything because this is like a 30-year-old film. Yep. And if you haven't seen it by now, I don't really think you're all that upset that we spoiled it for you. I mean, we, we did, during part of it, look it up. It's from... 91 because i'm like why didn't they reference ghost and the answer is because it was from 90 so it was mm -hmm. a new film mm -hmm. <laughs> um but they they die and they go to hell and in hell they seek the assistance of the devil and this is where they start to get things right yes because the devil does not give a hoot about them they they attempt to appeal to his good side Again, to beseech him to help them. Yes. Uh, they even say, hey, you know, you're not such a bad guy. You've got a bad reputation, but you're a solid dude. He's not. At which point he sends them further into hell. Yeah, because that's who he is. Yeah. That's what he's like. Because realistically, if the devil has any interest in you at all, it is only up to the point at which you haven't gone to heaven. I, to, to use an earthly example that many people will understand... When you're deep in sin, the devil has no particular interest in you because he's already got you. Yeah. But many persons, when they begin to experience a conversion, when they allow Christ into their lives and begin to change their ways, they will experience considerable resistance because the dark powers feel that, you know, fear that they're losing them. Yes. And while they are in heaven, they encounter an area with many rooms. Hell. Or hell, yes. While they're in hell. Sorry, they do go to heaven, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. And that's all basically like big open communal areas. Yeah, it was big open communal areas, and lots of arches and homes. pillars. Yes, <laughs> we, we will we will get to a critique of their heavenly architecture in just a moment. But one thing one thing they do get right is that hell is for the most part small confined spaces. In, in pretty much every room that they entered, seemed to be tailored just for them. Mm -hmm. You know, either they were either they were both in a room, and it was a and it was a room that had a a, a hell that lurked, uh, or what they would have interpreted as being a hell that was lurking for them both. A, a collective fear. Yes, mm -hmm. or they went into rooms by themselves, and they experienced a particularly fearful moment from their past, kind of a thing, and and one that they had experienced by themselves. Yes, and, not and together. And at this point in time, was now taken to an exaggerated level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and this corresponds 
great to all of our understanding of what hell is like. Yeah. Because everyone who's in hell is by is there by choice. Because they have chosen to reject God's grace and friendship. Mm-hmm. So, they're very much turned in on themselves. Yes. You know, this is particularly highlighted in one of Nate's favorite books, The Great uh, Divorce. The Great Divorce. By C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Where, where, where people will, uh, you know, they would find, the, there are a number of uh, individuals in that book that tend to find that they would rather have, the, th- the they would rather be in hell with the thing that they want mm-hmm. than be in heaven with everything they could ever want. But in this case, they're in hell with the things that they don't want. Yes, yeah. in this case, they're in hell with the things that they don't want. No real, I no real idea of how to get back to the point of uh, defeating the evil that that has put them in this position. Mm-hmm. So, don't turn to the devil for help because he won't help you. <laughs> no. Hell is an awful place where you're very much turned in on yourself, and you find yourself, you know, rather isolated. mm Hmm. Now, this is this is our hell episode, but we do have to touch on Bill and Ted Bogus Journey's version of heaven. Yes, because that's <sighs> just it's problematic to say the least. Well, the good the good thing is, whereas hell is a much more individualistic experience because again the devil is a divider; he wants to separate us from each other. Heaven is almost entirely experienced as communal spaces. Yes, when when they are there, they are all there as a group. Um, yeah, they're with other people. You know, they, they see other people interacting with each other. Like when when uh, mm-hmm. Station was playing charades. Mm-hmm. Now, where they get it really wrong is the architecture. Jess, can you <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about arches? Arches are made so that they can hold up the weight on their own. It was a a marvel of the time when they started discovering them because they were able to you know transfer a much heavier weight through a smaller area. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of building a Greek temple, which is a maze of it's a, it's a, it's a columns, great big, it's a great big flat thing sitting on top of a bunch of columns that hold all the weight up. Instead, I build an arch, which allows more open space. <laughs> yes. And yet, what we see is there's a giant arch supported by columns throughout. For those of you who, in so much beige, for so the, much beige. For, for those of you who that's grew, pretty typical. For those of you who grew up in the late seventies, early eighties, think uh, the think the, uh, the think Hall of the, the Hall of Justice from the Super Friends, mm-hmm. except with the arch and the pillars. Except those, at least to my reading, and maybe this is just my childhood affinity for the Super Friends. Mm-hmm. Those appeared to be just decorative. Yes, they were just decorative. They were they were window. They were essentially uh, spaces in between windows. Whereas we, we actually had the discussion. <laughs> Like, well, maybe the pillars are just decorative, or maybe the arch is just decorative, but the pillars appear to be really substantial. So even if they're a decorative element, they have, they they look like they're load bearing. Yeah, which it's an arch, man. If anyone would understand arches, it's heaven. Yeah, uh. arches get support at the ends, not in the middle. <laughs> Because well, I mean, the, the art, but, but you know, I'm saying the arch is designed the is to support itself in the middle <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and to deliver all of that weight to the ends, yep. where the supports would be. So if you've got to support it with a whole bunch of, of pillars, you might as well just go for a flat space, which will allow you to maximize your room. Yes. Think think more like Parthenon. <sighs> but... The single greatest takeaway from Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Okay. Don't ask the devil for help. No. Just don't. No, the, when, when they did ask the devil for help, it actually made their situation worse. Mm-hmm. And that they were stranded on a rock, and they attempted to get his attention to see if he would help them, at which point he began pulling the rock into a furnace mm-hmm. to obliterate every, the rock and everything on it. Here, here I thought the greatest thing is... If you are in a, a afterworld, much like the Seventh Seal, but somehow more family friendly, <laughs> well, because it's, le- it's it's less Swedish experimental film. Yeah. You should play. You, sh- you should play board games with, with yes, that. new games. He, he's he's got the ones that've been around for you know hundreds of years down. Yeah, he's but, had know, lots Twister. of time. He's had <laughs> lots of time to practice chess. <laughs> Despite the popular image of the Grim Reaper, that is not really something you encounter when you die. <laughs> 
So go down below into the comment section and uh, maybe let us know what you think about Bill and Ted's depiction of hell. Maybe, maybe you've seen the movie. Maybe you haven't and you want to go see the movie. Um, also. And you're mad at us for spoiling it. Yes. Maybe maybe you could comment about their newest film and what hell like was hell was like in that one. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yes, they did have a different hell in that one. Well, I mean. I mean, it was it's still hell, a but it was. Of the same, you know? I'm just saying it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a shot for shot. No. Uh, d- redepiction. Should we instead have talked about Futurama and the Robot Devil? Maybe you know a better movie, a movie that better references hell. Well, I mean, it's almost too easy to think of the film where Bill Cosby plays the devil. Yeah, that just seems awful spot on. Ugh. Plus, that's just the devil, not hell itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, while you're down there, make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get notified when new episodes come out. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share that love.